Hey, I'm Sarah, and welcome to Looking Beyond the Veil for our chat night. Our fun facts, chat night. Fun facts, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But hey, it's, <laughs> it's something other than just coming out here and, and chatting, doing nothing. So anyways... I'm a little bit early tonight. It is only 10 to 7. But I'm ready. So I thought, well, what the hell? Why not? Let me come out and say hello to my friends. Let's hope that you join me. Tiger Size and Tamara 1111. Hey, you guys. Hello, darlings. Welcome. Do you see Uni? Can you see him? You want to go out? There you go going. Anyways, uh, Uni thought he'd come and say hello to you. <laughs> hi, Helen. Hi, Phoenix. Phoenix Rising. Hey, Vendetta. Hi, darling. There's my Jenny Berlin. Hi, darling. I was just answering you on the community board. Uh, on the weekends, it's busy, busy for me. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do the community board Monday to Fridays with the horoscopes and stuff. So, Hi, Rachel. So um, that way it frees up my, my weekends a little bit for me. Hi, everybody. Francis, hi. Hi, everyone. And hi, Peggy. C is in the room. Hey, C Bank. Hi, hi, darling. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, darling. Helen. Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching some of you here, and it's just like, oh, uh, oh, Tamara, Uni, Vendetta, Phoenix, D, C, Bing, Francis, <laughs> Nancy just walked in the room. My friend Nancy Fake, who doesn't live that far away from me. Hello, Nancy, darling. How you doing? I hope you're faring well. I hope you're doing okay, my darling. I just want to pull down a little bit. There we go. So you can see my beautiful cross <laughs> that uh, Phoenix Rising gave me. So, yes, hello to all the monitors. Yes, the monitors. Blessings, darlings. Thank you, Francis, darling. Okay, I got some crazy, crazy stuff for you tonight. We're just going to be... Um, oh, by the way, Vendetta, thank you, darling, for saying so much, uh, saying hello to spirit. Thank you, Rachel. I love it, too. It's it's heavy, but it's it's nice. I really like it. I should be wearing my cross earrings with it. Hey, Diane. Hello, lovely. But, yeah, so um, I'm going to be jumping in and out of different topics here. So we're going to be starting off with one topic. And then it's just going to switch right over to something else. So, but you know me, we got 15 in the room. That's great. And we're early. So I guess nobody got a notification because well, I, I put three videos out just now. Anybody get a notification? Anyone? Thank you, Vendetta. You did, Phoenix? Wow. See, you got one too? Oh, oh, yeah, we're on a different channel. Okay, yeah, that's good. Tamara didn't get one. Rachel got hers. Okay, yeah, hi, Michelle, darling. Hi, love, come on in. And for Lauren, oh, hi. Hi, darling, yes, you did. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just remembered we're not on readings. Yeah, if we were live on readings, I don't think any of you would have got a notification. All right. Hopefully we'll see some orbs running around here tonight. 8.23 a.m. on Sunday. Oh, it's early on a Sunday. Oh, um, yeah. Australia or New Zealand, right? Right, darling? I, I think... Oh, 
know. He just took a break from cleaning. Oh my God, don't talk about cleaning, darling. Come on over here. <laughs> South Australia. Okay. Where's our strawberry? Phoenix. Where's our strawberry? Our strawberry's not here. Maybe she maybe she didn't get a notification. And uh, and we're early. Maybe she didn't get a notification. Our wolfman is not feeling too well. Please prayers up for our wolfman Pete, who's not feeling too well. I hope she's not sick too, Jenny. A dragon slayer grandma. Hi, darling. Been a long time. Yes, indeed. I believe you, Nancy. I know. When I was talking to you, you said you're in bed at 7 p.m. Holy crap, that's tired, darling. When you're crawling in your bed at 7 p.m., you know you're freaking burnt. Holy. <laughs> Thank you, Tamara 1111. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I'm going to um, move my... Um, keyboard because the cats are roaming around here and they're going to be walking on it and next thing you know I'm going to be losing the connection or something uh, if not I'm asleep on the couch you're tired out darling cheers darling it says enjoy every moment and not just the coffee Enjoy every moment. Mm -hmm. Love to the four leggeds. Well, I, I don't know where our strawberry is. I hope she's okay. I hope everything's all right. Maybe she slept in because it's only 8.30 on Sunday morning there. Maybe she slept in. Okay, so we're going to start without our strawberry. Hopefully, she'll pop in. We're going to start off with August 15th is a National Relaxation Day. All right. Um, unfortunately, it's on a Tuesday this year. So National Relaxation Day on a Tuesday. Well, you know what? Go to work. Lay back. And if the boss says, you know, how come you're not working, Vendetta? <laughs> you can say, hey, it's National Relaxation Day. It's August the 15th, right? So you guys can use that for an excuse. Maybe your, bo your boss will relax too. Yeah, and you can relax with tacos. Yes, well said. <laughs> yes, indeed, chilling. National Chilling Day. So put that on your calendars, August 15th, or take the day off and relax. Now, researchers, I'm off all summer. Sweet. <laughs> but are you getting paid all summer? That's the only thing. Do you get paid all summer? I don't think you do. Because I did your job and I didn't get paid. There's our Wendy Mays in the room. Hello, my darling. Hello, love. Okay. Researchers have been studying what they know about Neanderthals and what their sex life was probably like. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? What? Why is man so interested in sex? Hello, Uni. Why is man so interested in sex? I don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Man is going to know what every animal does in, in the sexual de department because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, so, so they now believe that we were once Neanderthals, but that Neanderthals and humans walk at the same time. So you know how they say that man was a Neanderthal, but now they're saying Neanderthals were a separate uh, beast 
and humans and Neanderthals live together. And then they began to mm, interbreed. Okay. That being said, um, but then there were humans having sex with a different breed um, or tribe and children were born. So scientists say that we can thank Neanderthals for a gene that is called HLA B51. Oh my God, what is that? <laughs> it has passed down through generations, which causes the sores of the mouth and the genitalia. So uh, I think they called that what hoof and mouth disease or something. And they do in animals, but uh, I guess Neanderthals were more closer to animals than we were uh, animals. So, anyways, um, also. Also, lupus, yeah, herpes, yes, Rachel. Uh, also, herpes, uh, diabetes, and, yeah, Crohn's. And they believe these were all passed down through this HLA B51 gene that we caught from um, Neanderthals. <laughs> they believe also that man rose up against the Neanderthals and fought them into extinction. Well then. So after, after a toe was found of a Neanderthal female, genetic analysis showed a very close connection in DNA samples, uh, proving that they had sex amongst themselves. Next page. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. Scientists found that the level of inbreeding was especially high in this female. The scientists have also found that Neanderthal males were also approximately in, in size to human males in the penile department. All right. So they weren't like huge, like not dragging it around, but much like the human men. So, um, so they were not larger. So what happened to them? Well, it is pretty much a fact, at least scientifically, that they didn't really die out, but that they live on through us. Humans, we are not only human, but also we are Neanderthal. Now, I don't know. <laughs> they evolved yeah, through us. So now I don't know if I have Neanderthal in me, but I know sometimes I can be barbaric. <laughs> But I think a barbarian is much different than a Neanderthal. But I do believe that, you know, if you're messing around with barbaric animals like Neanderthals, then, you know, things like this can probably you know, move forward in us. So, <laughs> <laughs> is there a gas leak over there? There's strawberry. <laughs> There's strawberry. Hi, darling. We were looking for you. <laughs> yes, indeed, Forlorn. I think you're right. Uh, I want to have Viking DNA. Maybe you do. <laughs> I think I do. There's a, quite a bit of Hungarian there. <laughs> Tomorrow, my friend who is 98% DNA. It's a big kind of dumb guy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Stop it, Wendy. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I think he's uh, he went somewhere to have a nap. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> My uncle, Peggy, my uncle, oh, man, 
he really, really looked Neanderthal. I mean, his his forehead was like flat and it, and it came out over his eyes like he had a shelf that came out over his eyes. Man, I tell you, he really looked like Neanderthal, man. If there's no men in the room, where's the men? Where's the men? Where's, where's our men? Where's our men? Okay, let's let's go from Neanderthals to the true Neanderthal, Hollywood. Yes, let's go to Hollywood. Okay, we're going to talk about, do you know Clint Eastwood? God love him. I love Clint Eastwood. Damn, I love Clint Eastwood. He wore the same poncho for the movies A Fistful of Dollars, which was in 1964. For a few dollars more, which was made in 1965. And The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, which was made in 1966, without ever washing it or having it sent out to be cleaned once. <laughs> so, all those three movies. <laughs> I mean, wash your poncho there. Come on, Clint. The Shawshank Redemption, when it said open cell 237, cell 237 is the same number as the haunted room in The Shining. It was room 237. Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator was paid $21,429. For every word he spoke. Because we know he didn't speak a lot. So, Asta La Vista Baby made him $85,716. Wouldn't it be wild if you could get paid for every word you speak? I would be nonstop freaking talking, man. Nonstop. Nobody else would get a word in. Welcome, Francie. Welcome, Tara. Welcome, Francine. Hello, darlings. Yeah, Jenny. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Man, that's a lot of money per word. All the animals that were in the Matrix, um, mostly um, the pigeons and stuff in the cities, are computer generated. There's not one live animal that was used in that movie. Yes, indeed, for Lauren. I go, Francine, darling. Oh, Nancy. <laughs> um, Austin Myers in Gold Member, that movie that was made and came out in 2002. Mini Me is wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs hockey jersey. I don't know if any of you guys ever knows that. I think he's got a big dollar sign necklace, but he's wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs um, hockey jersey. And the reason for it is because Mike Myers um, is that's his favorite hockey team. He knows that tomorrow. And by the way, the Leafs suck, man. No, I, I got to tell you, I got to bring it out. The leaf suck. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're in all the really big games, but we never really make it. We stink. Let's go to history facts that you might not know. Leafs pre-1967. Okay. I didn't think there were any animals in Matrix. I don't think there were either, I'm, but I, I do remember uh, the pigeons in the city. But I don't remember any animals. But the pigeons, they were um, computerized. Computerized pigeons. So during the uh, Austro-Turkish War in 1788, Austrians accidentally attacked their own forces. 
after getting drunk and mistaking them for the enemy. How? <laughs> How do you, you get loaded drunk and you look over and say, who are you? <laughs> are you the enemy? <laughs> How drunk were you that all of a sudden you thought you were sitting with the freaking enemy? Now, what happened? How? <laughs> and so they battled each other. How the hell does that happen? Man, they must have been really, really drunk. <laughs> Sounds like a Canadian. <laughs> hmm. Egyptian pharaohs would publicly masturbate into the Nile, uh, guaranteeing a bountiful harvest. How's that for ego? The pharaoh coming down in all his beautiful golden robes, smelling like, I don't know, aqua velva or something, walking down to the Nile, public view, everybody coming to spectate and whacking off in the river and say, my sperm will bring us a powerful and a, a great harvest. When he was done, then other men would, would do it. So, but they came last, you know. Uh, but, you know, him being the emperor, he, he obviously had, you heard a gold member? Well, he had the Golden sperm, I guess. <laughs> um, many of the streets in California are named after prostitutes. Did you know that? Um, I never really checked it out. But if you guys just want to check it out, if you got nothing to do, check out some of the street names in California. If anybody lives in California, our Pete is not here. And uh, swimmers wanted to swim. <laughs> so, uh, but they're named after prostitutes, many of them. In ancient, uh, in ancient Egypt, if your cat died, uh, you would shave off your eyebrows uh, as a sign of mourning. Oh, Francis, uh, Francine, I'm sorry to hear that, darling. Hope you get better soon, darling. Yes, and laughter is good medicine. In 2009, a man in California took his life on his balcony. He said, the neighbors all thought it was a Halloween decoration. And so nobody uh, reported it. He was up there for a very long time. And... <laughs> I mean, holy crap. <laughs> I, I, would, I guess he was thinking, you know, if I, if I do it here, maybe somebody will call it in. And maybe he really didn't want to commit suicide, but because nobody paid any attention. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, that's just, you know, he's in the Halloween spirit. A uh, Ed Sheeran. You guys like Ed Sheeran? He loves surprises. So grab your buckets, okay? You're going to need a bucket or a, or your barf bags or whatever. You're going to need something for this one because that's really gross, okay? So you're ready for a gross one. Ed Sheeran can give you a gross one. Cheers. All right, so Ben Dedder's got the buckets. So Ed Sheeran loves surprises. So a fan gave him a, a cake that she had baked herself. I baked it myself just for you. Well, he cut it and bit into it. And he found that the fan had baked huge clumps of her own hair into the cake. At least he hopes it was hers. <laughs> so, you know, why would he have taken it, you know? <laughs> why would he just, why would he eat it? Why wouldn't he have thrown it away? Oh, thank you so much. It's so sweet. <laughs> just gross. 
All right, so now we're going to go to a little bit of a scary one. Uh, Stephen Hawking said before he died that the world would uh, end when we found the God particle, which was, by the way, found in 2012. And it is known as the Higgs, Higgs boson. H-I-G-S, boson, B-O-S-O-N. If you got a lot of nerve and strong will, you might want to look it up. If scientists keep playing with this particle, it could turn us into a vacuum which can um, inhale the universe. Due to the intensity of the explosion, it could create a new dimension. Now, a lot of people are going through this belief now that we are in a separate uh, reality. That we are in a, um, well, some people are saying video game or something. Because they believe that scientists have blown up the universe and we are in some sort of an alternate reality. Because they say that um, things have been changed a lot and changing a lot since 2012. And, well, that's true. And uh, there's a lot more Mandela effects than there ever has been. All I know is that there's a huge awakening. And that is what I really care about, a huge awakening. And if there is a huge awakening... And hey, I don't care if they blew us up or not. We are in an alternate reality. But there's a massive awakening happening to us. And this is a good thing. Many of us are coming into our spiritual selves. You've seen the God particle. You've seen that. Yes. Yes. That's right, Tamara. Well said. Okay, so just a couple of uh, zodiac signs here. Unfortunately, I don't have Pisces. I have six uh, zodiac signs here of uh, what they do when they get mad. You know, what would you say a Pisces does? Because I don't have a Pisces here, but and there's a lot of Pisces out there. When you get mad, what do you do? Now, I know Pisces can be explosive. But when they're not, what does Pisces do? They hide. They hide. And they get mad where they go and hide. They sulk. Yes, that's right. Pisces are big, big time sulkers. So, um, yeah. And they can be in plots. <laughs> They plot. You're right, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> yes, they plot. Never hide. They go hermit. Yes, they go hermit, and they think about it. They go quiet. Go within. Yes, indeed. And, and Pisces does. They go deeper. And they try to work on it. They forgive a lot, but once they get mad, yes, I go quiet. Then I explode. I'm afraid, says Nancy. That's where I am. I'm afraid. Two weeks of silence. I'm planning and plotting. <laughs> Mixing together things. <laughs> Eye of Newt. <laughs> okay, so the ones that I do have here is what do they do when they get mad? I have Geminis. Geminis start yelling. I, I don't know a lot of Geminis, but the ones that I do know, they never yelled. They always threw things out of uh, out of the topic. They always found something else to to try to. They they went off topic a lot. It's what I I find is with Geminis. They go off topic a lot. They can't really just face that one that one thing that they're supposed to be concentrating on every Gemini ever, I've ever met yelled my brother's a Gemini two-faced <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, I just find Gemini throw a lot of shit at you to keep away from the one main thing, especially if you're right and they're wrong. They hate to be wrong. That's for damn sure. They can be confrontational. They use words to destroy. Yes, indeed. Toga's a Gemini. So does he get mad and yell at you, darling? <laughs> I can't see it happening. No. I, I can see Toga making you a cup of tea. Oh, you pissed me off, but here's a cup of tea for you, darling. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sagittarius, Sagittarius ignores you, and that's true. I know quite a number of Sagittarius, and they'll ignore you. They'll just friggin' block you and, and ghost you until they're ready to talk. Uh, cancer, Cancer gives you a death stare. <laughs> I, I, I've met yelling Cancers, too. My ex was a, was a Cancer, and holy... Man, he had no problem in shooting off his yacker. That's for damn sure. Virgos, Virgos swear. And that surprised me because Virgos I always see as prim and proper and, and you know, and everything in its place and place for everything and, and just OCD and neat and tidy. And but Virgos, I, I never see Virgo like cursing and swearing, but so it says, Hi, Lori, welcome. Welcome into the room, darling. Come on in. My first husband's Gemini Cancer Cusper. The death stare and the indifference. Yes, Virgo's going to go dark and demented. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's scary. Um, Daddy was a Virgo. He swore, too, but he was so sweet. And uh, Aries, Aries, Aries threatens, not so much threatens your life, but they threaten, like, oh, that's it, I'm going, I'm leaving. <laughs> Aries threatens when he gets mad, or she gets mad, and Capricorn grows quiet. Uh, Capricorn, I find they just turn away and they throw themselves into the work, or Capricorns have a hard time. I know a couple of Capricorns. They have a hard time showing emotion. I, I tell you, Capricorns are, they're either one way or they're another. But the ones that I've met are almost emotionless. Uh, to show their love, they, they'll buy you stuff. To show their love, but they have a hard time being loving, to, to say, oh, I love you, or to sit and, and to be loving. They have a hard time. But they just throw themselves into the work, and, and and they just try to deal with it that way. <laughs> it did pan. Yeah, yes, Diane, did pan. Okay, so... Now that we're done that, we're going to go to uh, the peacock. The only, only the males are called peacocks. Only the males. And, and the females are called peahens. The male peacock. <laughs> cock. And the females are peahens. Hens. <laughs> and that's all I'm saying because I think you all going where I'm going. <laughs> yes, Jenny Berlin. <laughs> okay, let's go into Yubikiri. Yubikiri, darling. I said a bad word. What, peacock? Peacock is not a bad word, Francis or Phoenix. I'm sorry, Francis, you're right above it. <laughs> sorry, darling. <laughs> See what you did? Yeah, now I went and blamed Francis. Made her feel bad. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Yubikiri. Yubikiri is a Japanese tradition to link your baby fingers uh, with someone, and it was a contract. So we call it pinky swear. 
pinky promise. Hello, honey. And if you broke the contract, you lost your baby finger. Pinky promise, pinky swear. But if you broke that contract, this is where it all began. And in Japan, where you link baby fingers, I swear. And if you broke it, they come back, they take your baby finger. And stuff. It's called Yubikiri. Yubikiri. <laughs> they really meant it. Yes, indeed, Helen. They meant it. Research has proven that if you give someone a nice hot drink, they will be nicer than someone holding a cold drink. So, if you want to get some favor from, oh, well, I'm going to say Diane. Diane, darling, I brought you a nice hot cup of coffee, darling. You wrap your fingers around that. Oh, I hold it. Have a sip. Can you lend me a couple hundred dollars, darling? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so don't take them a cold drink. Don't take them a cold beer and because they're not going to be nice. <laughs> so if you want them to be nice, if you're trying to hit someone up for a favor, take them a nice hot cup of coffee and give them the, yes, the warm fuzzies, yes. <laughs> Victoria's Secret was originally for men to shop for the wives. And then it just became the, the women just kind of took over. Do you know when you lean in for a kiss, most people go to the right? So the next time you lean in for a kiss, or even to kiss someone on the cheek, if you go to the left, you will notice a person will go to you, what is their right, and you'll end up kissing each other. <laughs> That's right. See, that's right. Um, 36 billion rolls of toilet paper are used every year just in the United States. That, by the way, is 27,000 trees per day. Maybe it's time we started getting the bidet, changing our toilet system into a bidet and just using cloths, right? I mean, that's a lot. 27,000 trees a day. That's a lot. 84% of women have fantasized about murdering someone. And 91% of men. You know, you got to freaking wonder. <laughs> you, you know, you got to wonder. 91% of men have fantasized about murder. And 84% of women... I'm really surprised 84% of women. Man. No, I have never fantasized about killing somebody. I've said, I'm just going to kill that person. But to fantasize about it? No. I'm one of the 6% that has not. No. Yeah, that is scary. You got to wonder. The leaves and the flowers of violets are edible. Did you know that? So violets, you can add them to your food for a decoration, and they're edible. You can eat them. And you'll see a lot of people are, are putting violets on their food now and some other flowers. It puts a nice touch of color. Lots of flowers are edible, yes. Yes, indeed. Cupcake toppings. Nice. I wonder what they taste like. They're supposed to be sweet, but I don't think I've ever eaten a flower. The frying pan over the head was tempting. <laughs> mm. I know my cousin used to put some flowers in salads. I used to smoke flowers. They had a, a cigarette that was made of flowers. And I used to smoke them, and they were nice. <laughs> um, do you know gamers make better decisions? 
they have an enormous difference, enormous uh, in brain processing than non-gamers. They're quicker. And so get those games out, you guys. Deja vu this conversation. Cloves. Roses are good to smoke. I smoked cabbage and lettuce cigarettes. <laughs> Cat. All right, calm, calm. Holy. You saw a bird. Jeez. The balcony door is. All you can do is walk over there and look out. Steady jumps up here. <laughs> okay, let's continue on. Okay, blue light. This is going to be kind of scary you, you folks, but I can tell you this. Blue light can make you fat. Um, the blue light coming from our TV at night can make you feel hungry. Uh, so you are snacking and find yourself hungry. It is best to turn off your TV when you are dieting at night. So just to let you know, don't phones have blue light? Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm not sure about laptops, but I do know your TV definitely has a blue light. I mean, you're going to look at if your place is dark and you look over and you can see the, the light, the blue light flashing in people's houses, right? So it can make you fat, makes you hungry. And did you know some things give off particles of light, some crystals? Scotch tape. You know, when you pull scotch tape, it, it sparks. But it has to be a microscopic uh, thing that you have to use to see it. But, and I love these wintergreen lifesavers. If you guys have lifesavers and the wintergreen ones, for example, you chew on those. And if you have the right microscope light, you will see sparks shooting from your mouth from chewing these, from biting them. And it, it shoots sparks of blue light. So... Just to let you know that too bad we didn't have this kind of equipment. But if you were biting on the Lifesavers Wintergreen, you would see sparks of light coming from your mouth. So, <laughs> yeah, cool. I know. Um, some things about um, the countries there that we can go and visit, like in the Caribbean, it's a no-no uh, to wear camel in the Caribbean. It is often associated with military and criminal groups. And they do not like people in camel. So remember that. In Spain, you cannot wear flip-flops while driving. Here uh, in Canada, I don't think you can either. Or in your bare feet. Isn't that uh, true? Where did my friend go? Nancy. Nancy, I think here in Canada, you can't wear flip-flops when you're driving a car. Definitely not in your bare feet. You're not allowed. Um, in Florida, it is illegal to sing while wearing a bathing suit. Now, nobody's ever gotten a fine for it, but it is a, it is a law. In Tennessee, it is illegal to share your password to Netflix or iTunes, although there has never been an arrest. Yes, I believe it's true there, Nancy. And where else? In Malawi. In Malawi, this went viral. There is an air fouling charge. I can only imagine what that means. Because of the ridicule they received, it meant that you couldn't fart. If you farted, you were fined. If you farted in, in, in public, then you were fined. 
because of the ridicule that they received, the Minister of Justice retracted the law because he just, <laughs> they tore him apart. He went so viral when he put out that law. It was just ridiculous. In Belarus, you are taxed if you are unemployed. Um, it is in Eastern Europe. Because of using water for free and I guess I'm walking on the earth for free or sucking the air for free. I don't know. But they feel it's a good way to push people to go back to work. So we'll give them a fine and we'll tax them if they're unemployed. Now, some things that I picked up here was the most painful things according to polls and people that they asked. Yeah, how will they pay the tax? I don't know, probably with the welfare that they get from the government. <laughs> no, no. They have to go to their friends or their family. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yes, indeed. Helen, how would they know who farted? Exactly. It wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't me. So they say the most painful things are post-surgical pains. The worst is supposed to be anything in the feet. Any kind of surgery on the feet is supposed to be extremely, extremely painful for a long time afterwards. It was a cat. It was a dog. <laughs> Chronic lower back pain is supposed to be one of the most painful things in the world that you can um suffer oh my god nancy you're right <laughs> uh a hornet sting a hornet sting is supposed to be really really bad i've never been stung by a hornet i was stung by a bee and a wasp and a yellow jacket a yellow jacket anybody ever been stung by one of the little wee tiny tiny little things they're so tiny. You know what it feels like? Like someone's holding a cigarette on your skin. Yeah. Oh. Um, second degree burns are supposed to be really bad. The sting from a stonefish. Intense pain and swelling leads to the nervous system. And, and well, if you not, don't get uh, help in time, it can be fatal. So they die after they sting. They, well, that's what they say, tiger size. Yeah. That's what they say. Yes, it does hurt. That's what I heard, Nancy. That a hornet sting hurts. And um, a penile fracture. <laughs> For you gents out there, if there's any guys out there tonight, a penile fracture is supposed to be extremely, extremely painful. Broken bones, well, I guess it all depends on where broken bones are painful. And frostbite, frostbite is supposed to be extremely, extremely painful. It starts as pins and needles, the second stage, your skin turns hard and cold. And then when you go inside, then it becomes thick black scabs begin to appear. So, you know, when your fingers are all black on the end. Fibromyalgia is supposed to be the, one of the most painful things. Uh, it's a chronic pain, fatigue, headaches. Why can't they figure out what this is? <clears throat> they say fibromyalgia, but there's, they can't find... Anything wrong is <coughs> just chronic pain. And broken ribs. I've had broken ribs a couple of times. I'm going to tell you no word of lie. I didn't know they were broken until three days later. So um, it might have been one of those pains where it's so intense that you don't feel it. But I'm going to tell you, when you do feel it, look out. I had three broken ribs and didn't even know it. And I was going through it, just no problem. 
And on the third day, I was in agony. You don't want to cough. You don't want to sneeze. Nasty. Um, there's that little tiny, tiny, tiny jellyfish, the Arakunji. Uh, Arakunji. You guys know I'm talking about. They're so tiny, and they're supposed to be murderous. Those jellyfish. And the red harvester ant bites. 35% more, more potent than the bite from a rattlesnake. The red harvester ant. Liposuction is also on the most painful list. A lot of bruising and pain that can last for weeks. Liposuction. Hip replacement. Hip and knee replacement. Hip replacement is supposed to be really, really painful for a long time afterwards. Um, because how do you walk? I mean, it's, it's so close to the pelvis. How do you walk, you know? Heart attack, one in four people in the U.S. every year. Come on, you guys. Take care of ourselves. Heart attacks will be very, very painful. But, you know, I found out that it is much more painful in men than it is in women. Flesh-eating disease. It's another one. Any kind of knee pain, women have a higher knee injury than men do. And pancreatic cancer. Out of all the cancers there are, they say pancreatic cancer is the most painful. Yes, that's true, Nancy. Yeah, especially women. Yes, yeah, silent heart attacks sneak up on you. Yes. My brother had both hips replaced recently. My sister has torn her her meniscus at the moment. What is a meniscus, darling? Hip replacement pain after is different to before. The healing pain is very beneficial surgery. Yes. Thank God, Jenny. Wendy says, no, I don't walk with a limp. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Peggy. Yeah. It's supposed to be very, very painful, darling. Something in her knee. Okay. Thank you, Helen. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we're going to switch again here. and We're going to talk about the first Shorty Shorts. It was in 1937, and it was here in Toronto. And a vehicle actually hit a pole looking at the Shorty Shorts. Two women were walking down Toronto streets, just like a little country road back then. But a vehicle hit a pole. And people were going crazy over women wearing shorty shorts. In, 19, in 1864 to 1889, your family could have you put in an asylum, especially if you were female, for any number of reasons. Asthma, depression, anxiety, even if you've been abused. If you enjoyed reading in your leisure time, they could put you in an asylum. Or if you didn't get along with your family, if you were difficult. Isn't that sad? Grandma went to jail because she has seizures. My God. My God, yes, they're giving lobotomies a lot of them. Yes, indeed. So let's talk about some headlines that they, they put out there. And um, man held hostage by 
Caliban group didn't believe captors when they told him that Donald Trump was president. <laughs> no, Donald Donald Trump. Oh, come on, you're pulling my leg. <laughs> Shoplifter caught on camera shoving chainsaw down his pants. <laughs> A girl in Oklahoma was so excited because her dad got to be the um, the uh, the head coach at uh, the school, and so she was so excited. So they took a picture of her jumping around and so happy, and the headline said, "Student excited and dad got head job." <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Oops! Montreal man charged $130 for singing Everybody Dance Now in his car. Everybody dance now. Bump, 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 bump. Come on. Everybody dance now. I would love to hear somebody singing that in their car. I'd be like, yeah. I'd be, I got to take a picture of that. <laughs> Um, a study was done between rich and not so rich students. They were each given a jar of candy like this. Each student was given a jar of candy and they were told you can take as much as you want. But what you leave behind will go to this, the children in the um, words in the elementary school. Do you know the rich kids left like nothing in the jar? The not so rich kids took a few pieces for themselves and donated the rest of the jar. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the rich kids, most of them took them off. A woman called police about uh, about her husband, who was being abusive. When police got there, they saw the pizza sauce was all over the woman, the floor, the ceilings, the, the, the walls. In order to shut her up, her husband, her boyfriend, took a slice of pizza and slapped her across the face with it, and then decided to continue to throw slices of pizza at her and picking it up and throwing it again, picking it up and throwing pizza at her. Not once did he lay a hand on her, but he just slapped her in the face with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> During COVID, a man who worked at a uh, Florida hotel snuck into each room and stole the toilet paper. The hotel called police because he was seen heading for his car with a garbage can of toilet paper. He had 66 rolls of toilet paper that he was putting in the trunk of his car. 66 rolls. <laughs> what the hell did people want with all the toilet paper during COVID? It, it wasn't like canned food or a reason that. Why toilet paper? I, I don't understand it. A man was angry with his wife on Christmas Day, and he picked up the Christmas tree and threw it at her. Police arrived, and the man said that he was very, very sorry, said he was angry with his wife and that he had been drinking. I don't care. <laughs> if you can't control yourself when you're drinking then you shouldn't drink. And if you get that damn angry that you're picking shit up, especially the tree, to pick up the Christmas tree, with all the decorations in there, especially if you got children. <laughs> like, it's time to get some damn anger management courses in here. <laughs> right? Right. Cheers. Okay. I've got one minute left. We're almost done our hour. 
And before I read this last one, I just want to thank all of you guys for coming out and seeing me tonight. And uh, I want to thank my people in blue for being here to keep an eye on the chat and um, to make you all feel welcome. So we're going to end with this story. It's the year 2000. I want you to picture it. It's Christmas Eve. Picture it. You're all snug in your bed. Visions of sugar plums as they dance in your head. When suddenly you feel something on your toes. An elderly gentleman awoke to find a man in his home sucking on his toes. He said, what the hell are you doing in my house? And the man said, I've, I've come to suck toes. <laughs> Obviously. Well, um, a brouhaha broke out. With the man fled, but not before smashing the windshield out of the owner's truck. Police and canine units were sent out, but the toe sucker got away on that Christmas Eve. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. <laughs> and, um, and to all a good night. Namaste. <laughs>